Hey, welcome to Half the Battle. You know, G.I. Joe has had a lot of sub-teams over the years. Tiger Force, Night Force, Eco Warriors, the list goes on. But there's one that started it all. Special Mission Brazil. And we'll be taking a look at their team leader today. Meet Claymore. This figure was released in 1986 with no original body parts, making it a pioneer, and in more ways than one. You see, unless you count the very first year of the toy line, where they practically all shared body parts, this was the first time they made a Frankenstein figure, made up from previously used parts. His head is from Footloose his chest from the Televiper, with arms and waist from Flint, and legs from Dusty. That's a lot of donors! The figure actually hides it quite well. With the exception of the head, you can barely tell his parts were reused. On its own, it's a decent figure. The color scheme could be said to be a proto-Tiger Force of some sort though his camo pattern is obviously like a leopard, not a tiger. His accessories are borrowed too. His helmet came from Footloose, but they were too lazy, or more likely too cheap, to paint in the detailing like they did on the original. He's also got a Newsy that was previously packaged with snake eyes. Claymore came as part of a set, like I mentioned, he's the leader of G.I. Joe's first sub-team, Special Mission Brazil. You could only buy it at Toys R Us, and it included recolors of mainframe, dial tone, wetsuit, and leatherneck. This could mean that Hasbro actually got the idea for sub-teams from Toys R Us! The set itself is a bit weird, as I would have expected them to all have the camo pattern Claymore has. But the recolors are pretty damn eclectic. And that was the only toy Claymore got in the original line. He did get one more figure as a convention exclusive in 2011, but as I don't have it, I can't really comment on it. This brings us to the character. Unsurprisingly, considering he was a Toys R Us exclusive, he didn't appear in the cartoon or comics. But that doesn't mean he didn't appear in any other media. Oh no, sir! You see, there was another reason why he was unique at the time! The Mission Brazil set didn't just come with action figures. It came with a cassette tape, about seven minutes long, that tells the story of the Joe's special mission in, well, Brazil. They have to retrieve a downed satellite before Cobra can get their hands on it. It's an awful story with awful voice acting. Does it indicate a range? Probably a few clicks up this jungle path, wetsuit. And dollars to donuts, Cobra is too, so look sharp. Captain Claymore, sir? Yes, dial tone? Hard as I find this to accept, it is actually worse acting than the D cartoon. Uh, the story itself is so thin it was probably written on a cocktail napkin, and Claymore doesn't really get any characterization outside of being the grim, determined team leader. That just leaves us with the file card! First of all, with a name like Claymore, you'd expect him to be an explosives expert or something. But nope, his expertise is actually in anti-terrorism and martial arts. He did three stints in Southeast Asia. Yeah, that's still code for the Vietnam War, dating this guy severely. I did look up the 2011 file card, and they did update the section, so he doesn't seem that ancient anymore. It's a recurring problem on the file cards, since quite a few of them allude to Vietnam, making the characters pretty damn old nowadays. The most important thing to note about Claymore is... He joined the Joe team specifically at the request of General Hawk. Because he's just that 
damn good. Yeah, remember all that hard training and the rigorous selection process new Joe recruits have to go through? In Lightfoot's case, twice? Doesn't apply to this guy, apparently. It's actually even worse than that. He agreed to join the G.I. Joe team, but he stipulated they could only call him in on special assignments. Talk about being a prima donna! Yeah, don't call him in when we're just saving the world, only when we're doing it on the hard difficulty setting. I mean, G.I. Joe is supposed to be the most elite team in the world, and it's a great honor to even be considered for the job. But this a-hole? He gets to make demands. Never mind that in the military, you generally have to go where they goddamn well tell you to go. If I had have been Hawk, that guy's first special mission would have been Operation Clean Those Latrines With Your Tongue. And that was Claymore. The toy itself was decent enough, especially considering it was Frankenstein. But the character? You'd really expect the big egos to be on Cobra's side, not leading a G.I. Joe unit. Of course, I can't overlook the historical significance of this figure. It paved the way for all the other Frankenstein figures we'd end up seeing, as well as the many sub-themes G.I. Joe would get down the line. The good, the bad, and the ugly. Oh god, the ugly. And it all started with Toys R Us and Captain Claymore. For good and for bad. See you next time, everybody!